Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the C4 600. This is a 2022. We've had it for a few months now. It's up to 100, almost 150 miles. I think it's like 140 and some change. So might as well say almost 150 miles, especially with the bigger tires adding more miles. You know how that goes. So one thing I want to go over is I really, really, really love how bright these headlights are at night. They are just amazingly bright. And honestly, I feel zero need to add a light bar. Light bars do look awesome, but I just don't feel the need to add them because these things are super bright. Even the running lights alone are super bright. These seats are very, very, very comfortable. I cannot stress how comfortable these things actually are. I actually uh, sat back here and let my buddy drive it. Um, we were filming and I didn't want to walk the trail back. So I let him drive this and I hopped back here. And man, I'll tell you what, this seat back here rides so comfortable. If you are not comfortable on this, I don't know what seat you will be. This seat here, it's, it's thin, but it's so cushiony. Like if you push down, it's, I don't know, it's just super cushiony. It feels really good. This machine rides nice and smooth on the trails. One other thing that I do like about this machine is it gives you these lock and ride options. And I have my LED whips actually mounted in those. I have a video on those as well, of how I installed those if you're interested. I love the way that the rear end looks on this. I just love how that light goes all the way across there. I just absolutely think that is awesome, especially when it's lit up at night. And speaking about lit up at night, riding this thing at night, all of these light up real nice white. It's like such a soft white. It looks so pretty at night. I wish I had a picture. I should have got one last night for this video, but I didn't. It looks so nice, all lit up, all this stuff. It all lights up, two wheel drive, all of it. It lights up very, very nice. Come down here, here's your lock so you can lock the gear selector into park. Helps with theft and you have USB ports. You have a 12 volt outlet. You got a huge storage compartment back here. I keep water back here, my manual. One thing I will say though, these leak. If you're doing any kind of wet riding, these actually leak. I also like this here, but again, they leak. Look, look at this. They leak a lot. This is just from trail riding, regular old trail riding. So if you have something in here that can't get wet, AKA these remotes, I wouldn't store it in there. Now you guys know CF Moto comes standard with 25 inch tires and they come with 12 inch bead or 12 inch alloy wheels. I actually went with 27s, they're Sun F Warriors. They're very affordable. You can find them on Amazon. I'll have a link down below. And I also went with those Sedona wheels. They're 14 inch bead locks. Those are also pretty affordable. I'll have links down below. And they look super amazing on this machine, especially when it's cleaned up. One thing I must say, it is very, 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 very easy. And I stress this super a lot. Very easy for the radiator to get clogged on this if you're doing any kind of mud riding. So. If you're doing a lot of heavy mud riding, I recommend that you do a radiator relocation kit and some snorkels. I will say though, servicing this machine is a breeze. It's super easy. It's pretty quick to do. There is zero grease fittings on any of the A-arms, which I do not like that at all. Also, there is play between the, the hub and the A-arm where the bushings are. I have a video from new, I'll show you, but these do play and slide back and forth okay brand new brand new four-wheeler brand new 2022 all right i'm taking mental note of this that way nobody can say it's my fault check this out okay that's passenger side driver's side okay all right the only grease fittings there is is right on the hubs here there's none on these arms when I wish that there was. You must be careful when washing this machine, especially with a pressure washer, because you will 
get water down into the CVT. I actually was up down in this well here, cleaning that. And I went to get on my machine and it wouldn't go. I had to pull the cover. It was full of water and I wasn't even aiming the water. It just must have bounced off the plastic and went in there, but we was washing it a lot. I do have yet to get water in the belt box or the air intake from just riding. Main, that main problem was from the pressure washer. I have a love-hate relationship with this display. It's plenty bright enough during the day, plenty bright enough at night, but its location, it just gets absolutely covered in mud and dust and dirt. I kind of wish that they would have moved it up just a little bit and kind of so it wouldn't get that every time you hit mud or water and it splashes over, maybe help it or even give it a somewhat of a more lip to protect it. Not a big deal, not a deal breaker by any means, but it gets covered in dirt and I'm always wiping it off. And since then, the screen is actually scratched. Not a big deal, just something I throw in there. I highly recommend these Oxby Mate Gang switch panels. I'll have a link down below as to where you can get that. I love those things. I got one on all my machines. It makes hooking up accessories super easy and super nice. Guys, riding this machine, it rides so smooth. The two up is such a smooth machine compared to the one up. I highly recommend spending the extra money and getting the two up. Not only are you getting a longer wheelbase, so it's more sturdy in the trails and up on the hills because of the longer wheelbase, but it also rides a lot better than the one up. The one up rides okay, but the two, the two up actually rides a lot better and a lot softer. It actually rides softer than the 800 and the 1000, believe it or not. I don't know why, because they have more adjustable shocks, but I've been on quite a few and this thing actually rides a lot better. And I've had some uh, owners from 800 and the 1000 ride this and even they said the same thing. If you're one of those guys, comment down below and verify what I'm saying, because I know the haters are gonna be coming. I'm not saying that to say that the 800 or the 1000 aren't beasts because we all know that they are. The only thing I am saying though is for whatever reason, this thing rides better. I don't know why. I do have some safety concerns though, guys. Unfortunately, sometimes when I'm riding in the trails and this just started happening about 30 or 40 miles ago, when I'm riding in the trails and I let off of the throttle, it stays at like a high idle and wants to keep rolling. I have noticed for me, it only does this after it's warmed up and you've been riding it for a few hours. So coming here soon, we're going to be digging into that issue and coming down with a solution. I have an idea, I think I might know, but we're gonna find out when I dig into it. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, I can get to that or maybe sooner, depends upon if I can get caught up with all the customer work that I have going on here. I wanna thank you guys for everything that you've been doing for me, ordering parts, clutch kits and accessories and everything from me, helping me grow my business and grow CF Moto. I'm almost to a point already, and it's only been a couple of months where I actually need to hire some help. I wanna thank you guys so much. And if I don't get to you right away, I will get to you one way or another. I've been staying up long nights and getting things done and hopefully we can keep on growing. One other thing we have here is the hood. This comes off real easy. To get to your fuse box, it's right here. To get to your brake reservoir, it's right there. So you can keep it topped off. Also your diagnostic port is an OBD2 port and it's also right there. You can clean the radiator from the top to bottom with a radi or with a garden hose is what I like to use. Just a regular garden hose, no pressure, just let it run and run through the fan and everything. And those just snap right on there, just like so, real easy. Now guys, it does come standard with a 2,500 pound winch. This winch actually works wonders when it does work. I used it one time and it hasn't worked since. So that's another thing that we're gonna have to dig into and find out why it doesn't work. I don't know if it popped the fuse. I checked all the fuses that I could see easy on the trails and they're all fine, but we're gonna have to dig into that and see. If it ends up being a bad winch, we have a winch that we're gonna swap out. Guys, you wouldn't believe the power steering on this thing is so soft and so controllable. You could drive this thing in the woods with one finger, no joke. And that's with the 27s and 
offset of two inches. So this thing is four inches wider than what it was stock with 27 inch tires and it handles it amazingly. Now I must say, I did break an axle with these big tires and CF Moto covered it. Now, I think that I just had a weak axle because out of all the CF Moto machines that we own, that's the very first axle that I have ever broken. But I was being extremely hard on it. And I do have a few videos if you're new to the channel and have not seen them. So I highly encourage you, check out all my C4 600 content because it is the best content that you will find on YouTube with the C4 600. Now, a lot of you are asking if I'm going to snorkel it and radiator relocate kit it. My answer for that is no, for the simple fact that the trails that I like to ride, it will be in my view way too much. However, if they had like a low profile kit of some sort, I would happily and gladly do it. Guys, there's a reason why I do not recommend lift kits for the C4 600. It's just one of the machines that I do not recommend a lift kit for. And the reason is the angles that the CV axles are in from factory already is a very bad angle and they are on the line of being stressed out. Now, one thing I must mention is whenever you add a lift kit, it makes that angle even worse. And there has been a lot of issues with people dropping axles because of the lift kit. So guys, if you wanna lift, do it with the tires, don't do it with the kit. And whenever you go with bigger tires, you're definitely gonna want a Redneck Garage Edition clutch kit and a Stingray Helix that we sell. You can get with me on Facebook to get any of that stuff. That's just my opinion on why I will not be installing a lift kit on this machine. I know a lot of you would like to see that install. And if a company is willing to send me one to install it, I'll do a video on it, but it is coming back off of my machine simply because I want the longevity for the axles. And if you're wanting lift kits, I can get you lift kits. They're perfect lift kits. I am a dealer for him as well. So message me for those. So I know the big question is, Redneck, why did you purchase the 600 over the 800 or the 1000? Well, I have multiple reasons. Number one, I feel like there's already a bunch of content on YouTube about the 800 and the 1000s. And I feel that the content has already overrun itself and there's too much of it. Another thing is because there's not really a lot of content on the 600. There's a little bit, but there's not that much. And I wanted to bring all the riding footage to you on the 600. Another reason is price. Price point for the average person. The average person is not gonna buy the 800 or the 1000. The average person is gonna buy this just to trail ride with him and his wife or his wife and his her boyfriend or husband or however the combination may go, it's gonna be two people or even one person with the 600 one up. But I felt like the 600 was the way to go for my YouTube channel and my family riding and it still has plenty of power for me to have fun. Guys, if you look at my videos and you don't see the fun that I'm having and the smile that's always on my face riding this thing, I absolutely thoroughly enjoy this thing. I have driven the 800s, I have driven the 1000s, I've driven the 500s and the 400s, and I just feel like the 600 is the happy medium. It rides very well, and as we stated, it rides better than the 800 and the 1000. It puts down uh, the power with the clutch kit where you can hang with the 800 and 1000 with ease. For this thing being a single cylinder engine, you add a clutch kit, do the airbox mod, and maybe even add a tune from somewhere, you have a very, very, very good running machine. Otherwise, even if you don't do any of that stuff, it's still a very, very good riding machine, especially for the money. Not everybody needs the 800 or the 1000. And to be honest with you, would I love to have an 800 or 1000? I sure would, but I feel like there's already too much content on them on YouTube and it just isn't practical. So I stuck with the 600. I like to be different from other people and I like to go at things at a different angle. Those of you who have been following me for a, a long time, you already know what direction that my channel goes in. My channel goes in doing things affordable for the budget friendly family. My channel does not go into the people that have money to blow on anything that they want. My channel directs towards the people that are on a budget and live on a budget, especially the retired folks and the military, ex-military folks that are retired,
People that live on a fixed income and can't afford a whole lot, they can barely afford the machine that they bought. So my channel actually just directs right towards them folks. And that's what I like to do here. I don't like to line my pockets with a bunch of money. I like to help people and that's what we do. So with that being said, that's why I chose the 600 because I feel like the average person is gonna pick the 600. Somebody who's not gonna pick the 400 or 500 and somebody who can't afford the 800 or the 1000, the 600 is the next best thing, which is exactly why we picked out the 500 trail and the 800 EX because those were the most affordable machines, not to mention we really love those machines. There's reasons why we haven't upgraded our side-by-sides and those reasons are we love our machines and wanna keep them for many years to come. Redneck Garage is gonna run these machines into the ground, into the dirt. We're not gonna flip them every couple of months just to keep making YouTube content. I will find a way to make YouTube content and it isn't gonna be by buying new machines or getting machines handed to me like other YouTubers, just saying. So guys, the real question is, would I buy this machine again? And the answer to that is yes, heck yes, I would love to own like 50 of them. These things are awesome. The minor flaws that I pointed out to you today are definitely not a deal breaker, especially at this price point. This thing is a heck of a lot of fun. I could care less if those cubby holes were waterproof and I could really care less if it had Zerk fittings on the A arms for grease points because that is simply something that I can do myself later down the road when I upgrade the bushings because let's face it, Redneck Garage can't keep his hands off of nothing and we have to redneckify everything. It's just what we do here at Redneck Garage. So stay tuned in the future for those A-arms to come off, upgraded bushings to get put in, and we're gonna drill some holes for some fittings for some greasing points. Otherwise, they're not bothering us in any way, shape, or form, but I would like to see grease fittings all around this machine, CF Moto, just like I do the other CF Moto machines, CF Moto. Hint, hint, get with the program. I am not paid or endorsed in any means by CF Moto. I hope you guys like what you see here and I hope you guys make your decision based on what you've seen and I hope you guys go buy a machine. I don't care what CF Moto it is, just go get a CF Moto. You'll save money and you'll have fun doing it. They are as reliable as I say that they are and others say that they are. Do not listen to the haters, guys. Don't do it. They're just hating. Save money and have fun and use the money that you save to eat steak while the other ones are broke down in a trail. Just my two thoughts. I wanna thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. And know this was not scripted like some people say that the other ones were that I'd done the same way. None of my videos are scripted. So leave me a comment in the comment section. Peace out, God bless, and we'll see you in the next one.